I'm currently sitting in an R Robinson R66. This is Steve from Lone Star uh, Helicopters. Uh, he knows a lot about instructing and what it takes to get a pilot's license because he is an instructor. He has his pilot's license. So we're going to answer that question. People always ask me all the time. But first, let's get airborne. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's fly. Let's fly. Hey, Steve, that was a very smooth takeoff. <laughs> it's like you know what you're doing. You're balancing us out perfectly. <laughs> it's my, my prime function is ballast. Lagavista traffic, call got zero on November Kilo. It's going to be lifting from the southeast hangars. It'll be a southbound departure, Lagavista. By the way, as we're taking off here, uh, first thing I'm noticing is that the, uh, the R66 is very smooth. It is very smooth, especially compared to uh, a piston helicopter. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so the, one of the number one questions people ask me, either on YouTube or via Instagram, is uh, how do you get your pilot's license? And I think we can take this in two phases. Phase number one is how do you get your private pilot's license, like in terms of cost and time, like what's involved? Sure, sure. Yeah, so from a helicopter standpoint, the uh, FAA, which is the uh, a uh, Federal Aviation Administration, they require a minimum of 40 hours of flight time. 20 of those hours have to be dual instruction, so with a flight instructor. Uh, 10 of those hours have to be on your own, solo, and then the other 10 hours is usually made up of preparatory work or any kind of weak points that the uh, student might have or preparatory for the actual exam. So speaking of exams, there are, are three different exams that you're going to take. One of them is the written test. So for a private pilot license, the written test is 60 questions. And those 60 questions range anywhere from aerodynamics to meteorology to performance rules and regulations. Yeah. Um, then you have the practical test where you sit down with an FAA examiner, usually a designated pilot examiner, and it's, it's basically an oral conversation of seeing uh, if you understand the knowledge of to be a safe pilot. Okay. And then the last part of it, uh, usually on the same day, is the flight test. So you'll go up with the examiner and he'll run you through a few different maneuvers and make sure that you do, in fact, know how to fly the helicopter. Uh, correctly and safely. So there's FAA minimums for how much instruction you need. How many people actually do it with the FAA minimums? Like like 40 hours of flying, does anybody actually do that? Or is it usually a little more? Yeah, so um, uh, my student who had the least amount of hours had 43 when she sat for her check ride. Uh, the most that my one of my students had was 61 hours okay. when they sat. A lot of that doesn't so much have to do with the student themselves but their ability to dedicate the time. So not only is it the homework, the book work, but it's the amount of time that you're flying. That's what I was wondering because when I got my license, it took me birds, it took me a year yeah. uh, to get my license just because uh, I had to kind of pay my way. But if you consolidate it and you do it in like a really tight chunk, you don't have to relearn nearly as much on a week by week basis. That's right. Give me just a general price range. People are always curious about price because flying helicopters is not a cheap endeavor. Um, like, so let's say you're flying an R-22, which is the little training uh, helicopter that I learned in. Sure. Uh, flying an R-22 and you want to get your license, uh, do you have like a ballpark figure? I do, yeah. So take, you know, taking the minimum into account, 40 hours, your book, your uh, examiner fees, your medical exam, you're looking at a ballpark of fourteen to $15,000. Okay. So that'll get you your private pilot's license. Gotcha. If you're relating it to airplanes, though, you know, airplanes are cheaper to operate because there's less moving parts. Insurance yeah. is cheaper, which insurance really drives up the costs for everybody. Um, but airplane, you're looking at about eight to $9,000 for the same thing. Gotcha. Yeah. By the way, let me quickly interject that the reason I'm sitting in this helicopter right now is my friends at Flying Eye Sunglasses. They made this trip possible. So if you need sunglasses and you want to support the channel, click the link below, go buy some Flying Eye Sunglasses. You get 10% off if you use the code MICA. Brand integration, everybody. See, we did it. We did it. Yay. <laughs> so I want to fly because I just want to fly, but some people maybe want to make a career out of it. Sure. What about going one step further, getting your commercial license, and maybe making this a job? What's involved with that? Yeah, so uh, commercial license, if you're going from zero hours that you're not adding on a rating to your airplane, um, you're, it requires 150 hours total time. Really, the difference between a private pilot license um, and a commercial 
is not only the hours, but it's the experience. I mean, there's a lot to be said about actually getting out there and doing it and flying in the real world, whether you're doing it for yourself and experiencing things, yeah. or you're going out and actually training for it. So what a lot of people will do is uh, between their private pilot license of 40 hours and their uh, commercial license of 150 hours is to go ahead and add on their instrument ticket in between that. Your instrument ticket, you're going to need 40 hours of flight. Cardinal 305, Lago Vista. So you're going to need 40 hours of flight training for your instrument. So that's what people do in between the private and the commercial. Because if you want to be a professional pilot, pretty much every uh, job out there is going to require you to have an instrument rating, whether you are flying instruments or not. Just because it makes you a smoother pilot, more attention to detail, especially yeah. when it comes to having to trust your instruments versus looking outside of where you're going. Yeah, I got my commercial rating largely because I had already just, as a private pilot, fulfilled most of the requirements. Sure. If you fly long enough, uh, then eventually you just sort of hit a lot of those. So adding my commercial rating was really easy. But if you're just starting from uh, zero and you move through, um, like approximate cost for getting that commercial rating? You're looking at about $50,000. Okay. And yeah, then and like, the other trick, too, is that when you get that um, commercial rating, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be able to just go get your pick of the jobs because it's about hours, right? Right, right. So there's there's different tiers in the in the helicopter industry or probably pretty much in any industry. So once you get your commercial, you have about 150 to 200 hours. What some people do uh, if they have a knack and a desire for teaching is they'll go ahead and they'll add on their CFI. And what CFI is is a certified flight instructor. You can be a certified flight instructor, you can be a certified flight instructor, instrument instructor. Either way, um, when you do that, you start teaching. And as you start teaching, you really start to learn the material because you have to. You have to be a subject matter expert. But besides that, it allows you to build that extra time that you need while someone else is paying for it, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Once you have about 500 hours, you can start getting that first commercial job. And that first commercial job usually entails uh, flying tours, maybe in an R-44, which is the most popular helicopter in the world. Yeah. Um, you can go start flying those. Once you hit about 1,000 hours, you're marketable to the tour companies, say, in the Grand Canyon and Alaska, um, or even flying uh, oil rig workers out in the Gulf of Mexico. My first instructor, uh, he was my instructor for three lessons, and then he got a thousand hours and went and worked in the oil rig. Yeah, so yeah. the th thousand hours is kind of that, that magic number everyone's looking for. And other people talk about turbine time, jet helicopter time, like yeah. this R-66. That's valuable, it really is, but until you get a thousand hours, that, that first uh, tour job, they're going to transition you. Yeah. So if you want to go out, I mean, it's not going to hurt you, and it's definitely going to help you, but you don't need it. Meaning, don't go spend all your money on turbine time, because it's very expensive. Yeah. They're going to teach you. They're going to transition you. Gotcha. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good uh, overview of the cost and what's involved in getting your license. Have you thought about getting your license? Uh, if you would, and you live in Texas, call Steve. I put a link in the description for uh, Lone Star Helicopters if you want to check him out. But uh, honestly, like for me, flying helicopters has been the single greatest joy of my life besides my wife and child. Uh, you didn't think I was going to catch that, but I did. If you'd like to check out uh, you know, Helicopter in, in uh, the great state of Texas, please give Steve a, a call. Okay, I think this is a pretty good video. If you have any other questions about helicopter stuff, leave them in the comments. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.